Hello. I'm Atubo George and I'm so blessed and excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, this is the beginning of a new week and God has promised this month that he is visiting us. And he's visiting us because of the Abrahamic blessing. That's why I started this series of teaching since last week on the Abrahamic blessing. Now, it's so important that we get things straight. And this week, we're going to be taking it a step further. And I trust the Spirit of God will guide us and, and minister truth to your heart as you open your heart to listening and be blessed. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Join me right now in faith as we declare and make this demand. Say, Father, I receive right now today's benefit and my daily bread it's coming to me now in jesus name amen praise god expect a miracle now we've been we've been making this demand for a while now and i believe as we continue on this series of teachings you will begin to see why it's so important why even jesus said we should make this demand praise god thank you holy spirit yes so we began to talk about the blessings the blessing of abraham and we are the sea last week we were able to establish that we are the seed of abraham and because we are the seed of abraham we inherited the blessing of Abraham because when God blessed Abraham he spoke also about the seed and those of us that are in Christ we are the seed of Abraham now that's what brings us into the connection with the Abrahamic blessing that's what brought us into a place where we can lay claim to the Abrahamic blessing now then I we also looked at the substance of Abraham the Abrahamic blessing last week now this week we're taking it a step further and I want to share with us some of the things that uh, makes the Abrahamic blessing so strong and powerful now in everything that God blessed Abraham there were two things that happened in the life of Abraham that it's important we take note of and it's not something you should miss in any way because that's what brings to force what we are talking about and what's that in the life of Abraham God caught two covenants with Abraham two now we are going to be looking at these two covenants this week and first of all understand why god had to call a covenant with abraham and then two what is the essence what is the what is in this covenant and how how strong is this covenant now i want us to look at genesis chapter 14. genesis of chapter 14. thank you holy spirit and verse 18. Now, God had been promising Abraham, I will bless you, come out of your father's house to a land that I will show you, I will make your name great, I will do all this stuff for you. Yes. And now, you know the story, God began to bless Abraham. He went into, there was famine in the land, he went into Egypt and came out wealthy, you know, from Egypt, because the king of Egypt blessed him with enough goods. Now then, something happened along the line and Lot was taken away because where he was living he was living in Sodom they, they came to capture Sodom and Abraham got the news and he had to go fight and uh, rescue his nephew Lot then after the war Abraham defeated them got back all the goods and he was on his way back then something happened now look at verse 18, chapter 14. Then Melchizedek, king of Salem, brought out bread and wine. He was the priest of God most high. And he blessed him and said, Blessed be Abraham of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. 
and blessed be God most high who has delivered your enemies into your hand and he gave him a tithe of all now follow this story verse 21 now the king of Sodom said to Abraham give me the persons and take the goods for yourself but Abraham said to the king of Sodom watch this now I have raised my hands to the Lord God most high the possessor of heaven and earth take note of those words that I will take nothing from a tread to a sandal strap and that I will not take anything that is yours lest you say or lest you should say I have made Abraham rich except only what the young men have eaten and the portion of the men who went with me and Anna, Esco and Mamre let them take their portion mm. now we've read this many times we've heard this story many times but there is a lot that took place here that many have not taken time to study or find out in. and that's what I'm going to be bringing out now now watch this he met Melchizedek he met this man whom he recognized from the interaction that he was a priest of the Most High God. Now, this wasn't someone who he knew, like, I've had, I've had lots of funny things, you know. I heard someone say Melchizedek was a king that reigned in that time. I don't know where they got all those things from. The Bible clearly had, when you study scriptures, please, just, just let the Holy Spirit guide you and not let... Um, I love something I read Smith Wigglesworth said many years ago. He said, some read the Bible in Hebrew, others read it in Greek. But then he said, I read it in the Holy Ghost. Now, when you study scriptures, please be mindful of the, your, the continuity of your study. I say that for a reason. You know, um, I think the word continuity is used in programming when they do maybe movies or something they, they they talk about continuity you know now what does that mean that means you don't just throw in a part or a scene that is not connected to you know the whole so you have to find out what joins this scene to this scene and this scene so when you study scriptures you must have that continuity in your understanding and revelation you don't just take something and feel this is it, you know. And no, no, no. There must be where is it coming from? Where is it now? And where is it going to? See that now? And that's why Jesus said the Holy Spirit has been given to us, and his job is to guide us into all truth. Sometimes, because <laughs> You know, like um, someone mentioned to Paul, he said, too much reading have made you mad. Now, he, he, he said that to say, you've read a lot, and, and that's why your thinking is not normal anymore. Now, we must be conscious of the things we put our minds on. Make sure, uh, now, especially those of us that teach the word of God. Make sure your mind is stayed on the Lord, not on your study. We read a lot of books. We read several materials. But in all these reading, and this is the truth, you can be driven by your study. But it takes great discipline on your part to only allow yourself to be driven by the Lord despite what you have studied so you can study materials you can study things for study's sake and so the knowledge is there but you don't impute that knowledge to your journey until the lord have brought that knowledge in to your journey because what you're excited today might not be your excitement in the next six months and so you don't want to come and be changing your teachings or your thoughts 
that shows you're confused. And sometimes patience helps. Something is tickling in your mind. Okay. If it's the Holy Spirit, it will never change. If it's your mind, wait for a few weeks. It will change. Praise God. Yeah, I just feel I should express that. So I brought that up because, you know, you've had different kinds of things. Now, who was Melchizedek? Melchizedek was simply the manifestation of the word of God. God came in the flesh and this time he came as the high priest. See that now? Yes. Now, now understand, understand, because when you study the book of Hebrews, he tells us who Melchizedek is. This man has no lineage. He has no father, no mother. He has no beginning of this. He has no end of this. <laughs> what kind of a human being is that? He wasn't a human being. Now, in the life of Abraham, there are several times he had these manifestations happen. That was not the only one. You read the, the story of when, when he, you know, the Bible said God met Abraham. Um, you know, when, when God visited Abraham and told him that he will have a son and Sarah laughed. Now, that was a physical person. It wasn't a dream. It wasn't a vision. Abraham saw three men walking by and he, he spoke to them. Hey guys, where are you guys going to? Why don't you stop over and uh, let me wash your feet and stuff. And then they stopped. He prepared food. They ate together and they continued conversing. And Abraham recognized that this is not just a normal human being or normal human beings. He knew. Now, you know that story. So, now that was another manifestation of God. Now, people are used to manifestation of angels, but they hardly realize that God shows up. Now, when I mean God shows up, do you mean God left heaven and came down? No, it's very simple. It's the word of God being made flesh. See that now? Is the word of God being made flesh? Jesus, the coming of Jesus is not the, wasn't the first time the word of God was made flesh. Follow me. But that was the first time, and John said it, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. All these other times, he, they don't dwell among us. They just show up. The word of God made flesh, shows up, and just leaves. But for the first time, the word of God was made flesh and dwelt. So for him to dwell among us, you go, you've got to be able to trace the beginning and his end. You know what I mean by that? So he came to this earth. They knew how he came to this earth. And then they knew how he left this earth. You see that? Now, so that's the first time the word of God was dwelling among us. Okay, so let's go on. So Melchizedek was God showing up in the life of Abraham. And this time he showed up as the high priest. Now you ask yourself, what was so important that God had to manifest himself as a man? What was so important? Normally God speaks to Abraham through dreams, through visions. But this time around, this was so important that he had to show up physically. Now I want you to keep that at the back of your mind because we're going back to it. Now, so he came and then he had with him bread and wine. So he met Abraham on that journey coming back with all those goods and all his servants. And then he met him. And they had a discussion. Now, Sometimes, because, you see, I always tell people this. The Bible is written in summaries. And that's because God never sat anybody down and dictating the Bible to him. This, as I always told you, the Bible is a compendium of testimonies of people who received the word of God. What they did with it and how they ended. That's, that's the best definition of the Bible. A compendium of testimonies of people who received the word of God, what they did with it and how they ended with it. Praise God. Now, so this man met Abraham and he came with bread and wine. Now, why did he come with bread and wine? He came with bread and wine as is, remember, this man was a priest. He was a priest of God. So he came with bread and wine to show Abraham that, hey, 
I want to cut a covenant with you, or rather God wants to cut a covenant with you. And he, as the priest, became the witness to that covenant. Ah. Mm. Now, this God had been promising Abraham, he's told him a lot of things, but now God is taking it a step further to make it serious and to seal it. So Melchizedek showed up and he came with bread and wine. And he says, look, blessed be Abraham of the most high God, who is the possessor of heaven and earth. Now remember the promise that God made to Abraham is that he will make him great and he will give him land. You understand what I'm saying? So now Melchizedek shows up and introduced he came with a word of blessing and says, Blessed be Abraham of the Most High God, who is the possessor of heaven and earth. The one who has said he will bless you, he is the possessor of heaven and earth. Now, what does that mean? It means he can bless you. Because anyone who wants to bless you, cannot bless you beyond his capacity. You understand what I'm saying? One who doesn't have millions cannot bless you with millions. It is only one who have millions or have dealt with millions, who, who owns millions, that can actually tell you, look, I will bless you with millions and you can believe that one. So when Melchizedek came and introduced God to Abraham as the possessor of heaven and earth, he was saying something to him. Like I said, this is written in summary. And it will take the Holy Spirit to bring you into some details of those conversations they had. And they had this conversation. And this was when Melchizedek taught Abraham concerning tithing. Now, Abraham didn't know anything about tithing before this meeting. So him giving tithe to Melchizedek was not a spontaneous um, reaction. It was something he was instructed to do. It was something he was taught about. I told you this was a covenant that they were coming into. Abraham and God. Melchizedek became the witness of this covenant and what is this covenant god was saying to abraham you know what i'm making a covenant with you that i'm going to take care of you completely so he brought him bread and wine that signifies provision that signifies meeting your needs so he said look i'm going to meet your needs that was the essence of this covenant and not just him. It was going to be an everlasting covenant. Praise God. Yes. It was that serious that God had to show up in the flesh as the high priest. To be a you know, <laughs> it's amazing. You know, who, who will God call to be a witness? He had to produce one himself. <laughs> One who is as eternal as him. And so it was his word made manifest in the flesh. Our time is up for today. Now we're going to continue from here tomorrow. This is very important that you follow through. Praise God. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you for your knowledge that is coming to us. We open our hearts and the manifestation and reason for all these teachings is seen in our lives. Thank you, Lord. And I pray for everyone watching right now. Your life is turning around from today. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. God bless you. Bye.